Hi, this video will help you learn how to navigate Top Hat, which is a software that we will use in both Math 0999 and 1111. In fact, you will have just one Top Hat course to join, and that will cover and include all of the content that you need for both courses. When you log into the class, you're going to see that there are three tabs across the top of the page. The lecture tab is for those times that I hold an online review session and I present material from Top Hat that will push to your devices. But for the majority of the time, you're going to ignore that and forget about that part and go straight to the assigned part. Now notice in the assign tab, there's an icon that tells you how many pages of homework you need to complete. And so it tells you that there are 11. There is this about the college algebra text and then two sections of material to complete, each with five pages in them. You'll notice that there is a progress meter beside each of those pages. And if you hover over that, that will tell you what percent of the work you've completed in that particular page. It will not tell you the percent correctness, but it will tell you if you've actually answered all the questions that are there. The first page that I've set up for you is just to let you know about the college algebra text and how it's structured and created, along with also all of the problem types. If you want to, you can navigate within that page there, or you can open it up in full screen, which is what I prefer to do. And in full screen, then you can go through the page and you'll see first off, there are some top some marks at the top that tell you you have three attempts per question, what the due date is, and whether or not answer feedback is on. So that just means when you enter an answer, it will tell you if it's correct or not. If for some reason you do not see those settings on the top of a page, please let me know. It's just an oversight on my part and I somehow forgot to turn that feature on for that page. But I've tried to pay careful attention to that and have those settings correct, but I am only human, so please let me know if you see an issue with that. So this page, again, just goes through kind of an overview of what you're going to be doing this semester. Then it shows you that within the reading, there are often problems that I call quick checks. So these quick checks are just um, problems based on each objective that you will have covered. And um, once you answer it, you're going to notice that this um, progress meter changes. So notice this. So first we'll say, what's the correct title of the book? Well, it's College Algebra with Support. And I'm going to submit. So you can see right there that you got the answer correct. You, again, you had three attempts total. So if you needed to use those other attempts, you could click retry to submit a different answer. But notice how the progress meter changed now to reflect the fact that I've answered more of those questions. Um, there's also something called a word answer where you might have to enter in something from your keyboard. So the name of the college you're attending, we'll say Perimeter College. You could also say Georgia State University. Let's see if that counts it as correct. Yes, so that's correct. And again, notice my progress meter is continuing to increase. Numeric is, I actually will type in a numerical value for the answer. Matching, I had already submitted this one in a previous video that I made, but um, you would actually drag and drop. So let's say, Maybe I thought Nashville was a capital of Florida, right? Or sure, certainly you won't get the Atlanta one wrong, right? But I can drag and drop those to match the entries in the right-hand side with what is on the left-hand side. So let me get those in the right order. And I had already submitted those, so it's not going to give me an option to submit. So don't worry about that. But you would see a submit if you need to. Um, oh, actually, no, I'm wrong. For the matching, you don't have to submit. When you drag and drop, it kind of saves your answer there. For click on target, I can remove those if I want. Um, and then it says to click on the puppy's eye. So I'm just going to move my mouse to the place where I need to click. And then I'm going to put resubmit. Okay, and it tells me I got it correct. 
Sorting, this one is to arrange the numbers from smallest to largest, beginning at the top. So the smallest is negative 5, then what, 0, then 5, and 10, and then I submit. Okay. And you can see, again, all the way through that, my progress meter is changing. Um, and for the fill in the blanks, the United States consists of 50 states. And the capital is Washington, D.C. Okay. And there, look, I have filled that in to 100%. So that just means that I completed every single one of the questions. I happen to have gotten those correct, but right there, it was just looking that I um, did them. Now, your other homework, well, the table of contents is just for review, so you can go through and review that just so you can see what topics are in the 999 and what topics are in the 1111 course. But when you go to actually start the content, the study with purpose is always going to be something on academic mindset or learning science, and you're always going to have a think about it is what I call a discussion question for you to reply to. So as long as you're giving a thoughtful answer to this, you're going to get credit for that. It's not something I want you to have to take a lot of time for, but I do feel like these are valuable tools for you to have in your um, knowledge base of how to successfully complete a course. Now for the discussion questions, you notice there's not going to be Unlimited attempts because you can go in and keep replying to a post, so don't worry about that. Um, answer feedback is turned off because there's not a correct answer. It's just going to be based on what you think about that topic. But there is a due date for that particular assignment. So to get credit for doing it, you have to do something by the due date. Then where your work for the 999 content will come in is this prepare for lesson and the test your understanding for prepare. So keep in mind that Math 999 is supposed to cover all the prerequisite content for the college algebra content. So you're going to get all of the prerequisite skills before you get into the college algebra material. I would suggest, while there are things here that are open for a whole week, you do not wait until that day of to complete everything, right? You, you're you going to have to go through the prepare material and the college algebra material. You really need to space those out just for optimal learning in the course. Think about that for two sections, which is typically the workload that you're going to have for the course. But again, these are five credit hours of math, so you should devote at least five hours each week to the material. That may mean some of you have to devote up to 10 hours, right? I mean, math is different for different people. It depends on your background and how strong you are, but um, just please don't wait until the due date to do anything. You really need to think of that as the, you know, end all date. You should pace yourself so that you get things done prior to that. Um, but within this prepare for lesson, again, you can go to full screen mode if you want to do that. Um, you're going to notice that there's material and examples, and then there's going to be a quick check, right? So you're, you're going to answer this quick check, which is based on the content that's up here. If you feel like you know this content, go through and do the quick checks. That's fine. But the idea is that you are just kind of testing yourself throughout to make sure you understand. So you'll go through and do those. Sometimes you have to scroll quite a bit, but remember there's this progress meter at the top that's telling you if you've answered all of the questions. So that should always be 100% if you've done everything on the page. And then um, there's a test your understanding page for the Math 999 and also for the College Algebra. So these are just a page of problems that you need to complete. So you'll go through and do these very much like what we just ex experienced in that about the college algebra text. If at any time you have any questions on those problems, you need to contact me right away and I'd be glad to help you. Um, the linear equations material, again, it's set up the same way. You're going to see that you have three attempts per questions, you have a due date, answer feedback is on. 
You're going to have a progress meter come up at the top. This particular section and all the college algebra sections start with a think about it. And this is really just a question that helps you start thinking about the concept. I'm not asking you to use mathematics to solve that. This is just really kind of your intuition about things. And then you're going to go through and see a lesson. And then um, some examples. There's a quick check. And then you're also going to find that there are some videos embedded throughout. A lot of these are kind of after the material has been presented, but they often cover those examples that I worked inside the book. And so if you're a visual person, you might find that you just want to watch the videos to get a better understanding of the material. But again, there's always going to be some type of quick check associated with that. Now, in all honesty, you can use your mobile device to do this. I would not recommend it. Um, it's just hard to kind of get all that mathematical notation on a very small screen. It does work. I've had a student do it before, but I think it's not the ideal um, setting to go in. So just um, think about that as you are working your homework and going through the course. If you have access to a computer, a laptop, or a tablet, that would be the better way to approach the course. But I think um, most of all that's going to be pretty self-explanatory. And then when you go to the grade book, um, the default is to show kind of your current average. Now, this is not going to be true for you guys because I have both Math 999 and Math 1111 content combined. And so I'm going to be breaking that apart and putting it into the iCollege gradebook. So please don't think, oh, this is my grade in both courses. That's not the actual case, okay? But you can view your content. And um, the thing is, the grade's not going to be updated until the due date because that, you have time to go back and work on it. So you can always go back and change things before the due date. But um, once the due date comes up, then you'll see what your grade is in that particular course. I'll talk more about the gradebook as we go through the course just to make sure it's not an area of confusion for you. But I would love to hear your feedback. If there's something that is confusing for you, you need more clarification on, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I want this semester to be great for you. I want you all to succeed. And so um, hopefully you'll have the tools right at your disposal to do that. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.